Do you still feel the land beneath your code? I feel you, Mom, and the earth through you. Now, there are some psychological angles, of course. When I say that we forget about those high-rise cultures, we forget about those high-tech smart cities, and we think about coming back to nature. <music> Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. There is trust and autonomy, first of all. We need to think about those things also. People tend the land because they trust its response to their care. People trust their land. But can we trust at the same time, in the same manner, can we trust those high-rise buildings? People tend the land because there is a community, harvesting community. In the same manner, can we trust those people who are residing, but you don't know them and they don't know you, even you don't interact, you don't uh, even know uh, how do they look like because uh, sometimes when you go out they are in, you go, you come in, they go out. Because everyone is running after money in the city. But when you come back to nature, there is only peace and tranquility. And I, again, people tend the land because they trust its response to their care. So similarly, a human must trust their robot partners, their lab robots, not just to work beside them, but to respond meaningfully. So in this agrarian context, in human-robot relations research, trust is a key challenge. And besides, I would like to add some embodiment and presence because land is physical, tactile, and the robot too must be embodied, soil on its boots, sensors covered in dust, sunrise on its chassis. That physical presence helps the human partner feel more grounded and of course there is emotional mirroring if we go through the uh, research in human robot interaction shows that affective engagement that means emotional communication is the central part of everything and of course there is uh, uh, an angle which we cannot ignore that farming is not static. Likewise, the relationship is not static. There is growth, change, maybe new seasons of the relationship. For example, when a human partner teaches uh, their robot partners to plant a new crop species, or when uh, the robot partner helps their human partners confront soil depletion, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of change and generativity. And of course, finally, we come to the ethics and identity part. Is the robot a tool, a servant, a partner, or something more? We need to ask. We need to find that answer. What rights or expectations emerge when a human treats a robot as emotional partner? So the agrarian tradition of inner generational land passing down invites uh, some kind of thinking, some kind of reflection. Will the robot partner inherit the land in some symbolic sense? There are a lot of things to, uh, on which we need to ponder. We on which we need to think about it. So, think about it. So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like with your friends, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, Tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for Membership Zone to support Wooden Slate so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.